I'm just muted. I guess I'm not muted, but I'm listening. <laughs> Do you have a question, Ruth, or you're just here to learn? I'm just to hear and learn. I'm with Mary. Mary's my daughter. Okay, cool. Hi. <laughs> That's fun. I took off the picture because I'm still in my bed head hair. I haven't been. No worries. <laughs> I would like to be doing the same. <laughs> just Hi, Heather. Heather. Yeah. Hi, Haley. Hi, Kathleen. Hi, Megan. So yeah, anybody feel free to pop off mute and ask a question. I've got one. Yeah. I always have them. I wanted to give somebody else a chance. Um, just finished third parasite cleanse, third ULT. Um, starting to feel like a little hungrier. If I have the major biotoxin issue, um, mycotoxin issue, is it okay to start adding in a little bit more food if my body's like, I wanted to make a curry tonight with some chickpeas and a little bit of sweet potato, but I, I've been pretty much almost mono fruiting. And then with a lot of detox adding in some vegetables to try to slow it down. But I'm just today, I'm feeling like I'm ready for more. Yeah, that's good. I mean, for one, it's good to listen to your body. And after 90 days and three parasite cleanses, that's an amazing, you know, your body's done a lot of cleansing out. So with the microtoxicity, I would just say go really slow and try to introduce things one at a time, like so that you can feel how your body's reacting to it. So if you're going to make a little curry, you know, I would try not to have so many ingredients that if you have a reaction, you don't know what, what it's from. So, um, spices are a great thing to start incorporating, you know, and then if you start, just start slow, you know, and just really listen to your body. Cause your body's in a very, um, clear space right now after all of that cleansing and just mono eating. Um, so you might find that just even a couple tastes might really satisfy you, you know, cause it's been a while. So just do it slow. And, um, but I would still say, try to stay, you know, 80% high mono, if you're really going to try to get to the, continue to get to the root of it, you know? Okay. Anything to help with the headaches from the, I've never had headaches except for detox now. Mm -hmm. um, and even sometimes adding food in or adding fat in, it just doesn't help. I'll do an Epsom salt bath, but anything to help with mm -hmm. detox headaches? I mean, Epsom salts bath would be my number one and it's just hard. It's just one of those side effects that you just kind of have to live through. <laughs> it's not one that necessarily goes away, but just make sure you're staying hydrated. Have you tried the cocoa pineapple hydrate? No, I can't tolerate it yet. Okay. If, if I remember, is that the one with lots of fruits? Every time I go to muscle test for it, it's a no. That one is like dehydrated coconut and pineapple and turmeric and black pepper. So um, oh, I, yeah, yeah. I can't do certain things. Yeah. Okay. Um, and otherwise, have you, I, can you experiment with the aloe digest yet? I, I haven't. I probably can. That would be another one that could really internally hydrate and just help okay. move it, move it along a little bit quicker potentially. But I'm actually like, my kidneys are starting to show flakes. So I was like excited. Cause like, it's like 14 weeks or something. So that so that's another thing if you have your curry tonight and you go check your filtration and it stops that would be an indication to continue to go on the path you've been going because your kidneys are just starting to open up so that's really exciting okay. yeah that's what i thought sounds good whole process should be move a lot faster now that that's happening so okay all right thank you thank you yeah hello katie hi kim Hi, Mary Beth. I have a question for you. Um, my husband just finished his 30 day. He did one 30 day and he's moving into the core four. Um, but I do, I'm going to give him my super cleanse R since I'm still nursing. Um, at what point should he take that? Should he take it 20 days out from his, the last cleanse R that he did or what's the best? What do you recommend for that? Yep, exactly. 20 days. So, um, did he do it in the middle of his 30 days? He did. Yep. He did the traditional basic schedule, middle 10. So now that he just finished, have him do the core four for another 10 days and then have him start back up on that super cleanser. Perfect. And then still raw as raw as possible. Yeah. I mean, that's, if you really want to get deep and you really want to kind of get to the root of the, the parasites as raw as possible is, is going to be the most ideal. Um, okay. because it'll just, it won't, it'll create an environment that they want to leave. <laughs> okay. So, okay. 
So, but moving forward, anybody else that decides to go from ULT to core four, 20 days is kind of the a sweet spot to mm -hmm. do that again. Yep. And, okay. and the reason being is just because usually that first round, um, when the parasites are dying off, they typically lay eggs and it's just a natural response for them to be like, whoa, I'm, I'm dying. I need to reproduce. And so those eggs typically hatch in a period between 15 and 20 days. So if you do that second round, most likely you'll be able to catch those eggs prior to hatching or while they're still too young to do it themselves. That makes sense. Perfect. Yes. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anybody else? Any other questions or shares? I have a question and I'm still looking for the root cause or trying to figure out the root cause, but I was, I've been on, I think this is day 23 of the um, transformation of the 30 day. And be, right before I, I went on this, my, I just recently, I just came up that my hip was going out of alignment. So my chiropractor keeps putting it back in for me. And I thought, well, you know, maybe with the aminos and maybe it will eventually. I just wanted to know, does it, does it help with maybe, could it help with things like that or bones just in general? I don't know what the, again, I don't know what the root cause is, but I was just wondering if, I don't know, if this, if you think maybe that this could help me. I mean, definitely there's potential for that because one of the reasons that our body slips out is if we if we have a lot of acidity in our body we develop a lot of like corrosion and sometimes that keeps the body stuck in certain places and so as you start to hydrate the body more and i oxygenate the body more you're basically hydrating and oxygenating the tissues and so as that starts to ha happen your body can become more adaptable and, and more strengthened in the way that it's supposed to be. So over time, absolutely, as your tissues become more hydrated. Um, and a lot of us are, are in a state of kind of systemic acidosis, which is hardened. And then that's why, you know, we pop it in and it pops right back out. But if we can get it to hydrate, then it becomes more able to like soft, you know, to hold things in place. So there's not a definite, a definitive answer to that <laughs> over time for sure. Yeah, because I plan on doing 90 day. That's my goal. Great. We'll yeah. see where I am. <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, I always bring in my sister's story here because she was in a severe car accident and she spent about 10 years in chronic pain searching for ways to heal herself. And really what did it for her was going high fruit and high herbs. And, you know, she's on the superfood program and now she experiences no pain in her body and her her joints are functioning like they're supposed to, everything's moving. And, you know, so it's amazing to see how the body can regenerate and heal itself given the right environment. And that, so. Great. But well, that makes me feel good and hopeful. Yeah. Good. <laughs> Anything's possible here. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kathy. Um, I'm, I'm very new to this program. And <clears throat> Heather has been wonderful and patient with me. And, um, now, of course, this whole concept is really new. And um, I, when I eat fruit, you know, when Heather said eat lots of fruit in the morning, I'm like, what? <laughs> um, I feel like I get really bloaty after I eat fruit. Is that normal? So it typically can be for, do you, do you typically not incorporate a lot of fruit into your diet? Uh, no, I'm hit and miss, you know, I just, you know, over the short, you know, actually I, I, I've always, it's only been since the whole year of, of COVID that I, that I really let my diet almost drop, you know, mm -hmm. and that's not like me, but, um, I, you know, when Heather called and, uh, asked me to be on this program, I thought, yeah, cause I really need a new boost because it was really becoming a monster for me because over the years I've eaten fairly healthy but it just got to the point that I didn't want any I, it struggled to eat healthy stuff because it really got bad so anyway um yeah so it's okay to be bloaty like that until my body adjusts well there's a couple other things are you eating fruit by itself or are you combining it with other things no nope, I'm eating that I used to be a um a fast I I, I did um uh, fasting for over two years 
and I actually, I'm not normally hungry in the morning. Mm -hmm. So I have to, um, you know, tell, come, I, I get up first thing in the morning, I, I take five amino acids and I go to the gym mm -hmm. and then I come home and then I, I start, I start to eat the fruit only because I'm really not hungry, but you know, I'm told to do that. Yeah. And I love, I love the fruit. I mean, it really is very good, but I just feel like it bloats me. And maybe that's normal for fruit with its fiber and everything in it. Yeah. So typically what, there's a couple of things, your body for one is adjusting to the increased amount of fiber. So when people have bloating with fruit, it's typically that they're not, their body's not used to that amount of fiber in their diet. And so, yes, it creates a bloat. The other thing is just always making sure you're eating fruit by itself. Like it sounds like you're doing, and it's, it could also be the process of your body killing off different bacteria and things because the fruit is one of the most alkaline foods we can eat for the body. And anytime we start to alkalize the body, that's like parasites and microbes and uh, bacteria, they all thrive in an acidic environment. So as we start to alkalize, it starts to create their dying off process and it creates an environment that they're not living in anymore. So sometimes that bloat can be partly due to that. And so my biggest suggestion is to focus on the fruits that are the quickest digesting. So your melons, I mean, melons can digest in like 20 minutes because they actually start to digest in the saliva of your mouth. So focus on the easily digestible fruits to start incorporating like melons, berries, and citrus would be my top choices. Um, and, you know, just start slow with them. There, there's been people that I know that were like, whoa, I'd eat one apple and I'd feel um, bloated. And then they just kept easing into it. And as their body got more alkaline and more used to it, now they're like, oh, I can eat three apples in a sitting and I feel totally fine, you know? So um, start with the easily digestible ones. And um, I would also suggest starting the day with some lemon water when you take your aminos because that, I do that. okay, good. Cause that'll really start kicking the body into alkalization right away as well. Um, and can I put cayenne pepper in there? Is organic cayenne pepper, or should I not do that? Um, you can for sure. Uh, just know that, like, if you're having any kind of mucus, uh, pepper, like spicy things, can be a little bit mucus forming for the body. So when you're, if you're cleansing, like as you go on through your process, if you find that you're cleansing a little bit, um, and you're having some type of mucus, the pepper could be irritating and aggravating that but I think it's a great thing that that could also be part of the reason you're experiencing bloat because um, cayenne pepper can also kill different bacteria and other things as well so okay okay I just started doing that on a regular basis again and I do like cayenne pepper and I just but I did buy organic because I wanted to make sure yeah and, and it can be really good it, I'm, I'm not sure if you've ever studied Ayurveda and the different doshas but some people need that extra digestive fire um, so incorporating cayenne or even sipping on ginger tea can kind of give your body a little extra digestive fiber to fire to break down that fiber a little bit more efficiently um, so you know, that could be something helpful to incorporate as well. And it, and it will get better. It's just your body adjusting, right? Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it. Anybody else? I love that we can all learn from each other here. So um, every question is a valid question here. I had a question. Because mm -hmm. um, we're... We're going to just start maybe in April doing that cleanse. Mm -hmm. Mary, you can help me if I'm getting this wrong, but I'm hearing everyone talk about parasitic. That's that what this cleanse is about. The big cleanse. Yes. Yeah, so there's a portion where we have um, a 10 day portion where we have Ayurvedic herbs that help with assisting in parasitic die off. So um, what we suggest is incorporating those herbs during days 10 to or 11 to 20. And basically it's just adding in two to four capsules a day, depending on, you know, how your system is. Sometimes four is at the beginning is a little, a lot for people. So sometimes people ease into it. Um, and primarily it's just to really get that deeper colon cleanse. Um, out of, so your gut can get just really rebalanced. Okay. And then, 
Is there, and maybe there is, and I'll learn more, uh, one that has with metals, a metal detox? Um, so we do have different products for metal detox. The Biomedic, which everyone here is on, that's part of the Ultimate Lifestyle Transformation. That one gently can detoxify heavy metals and as well as glyphosate. Um, but then if you're wanting to go on kind of like a deeper heavy metal detox, Mary Jane, there's a really amazing um, video on the Million Mom Movement YouTube page you could send her about how to really detox from heavy metals efficiently with Purium products. And that kind of looks like incorporating our green spectrum and our ionic elements and our fulvic zeolites. So I would say do the ultimate lifestyle transformation first. And then if you want to move down that journey, we can give you the next best suggestions. But the, the ultimate lifestyle transformation will set you up a really good foundation to kind of go deeper with if that's your ultimate goal. Yeah, and I don't know if Mary shared with you, but I have, well, they say I have restless leg, but now I'm spasming pretty much my whole body. So I'm, that's kind of one of my main focuses. Yeah, um, I personally had restless leg syndrome and the aminos and the apothecary that are part of the ultimate lifestyle transformation have really, really helped me. Um, and then I also have gone down a, a heavy metal detox path in the past that also really helped me with that. So that may be the next step for you after, after this 30 days. Yeah. Cause my, it's not just my legs. It's, I have a whole body thing flaring. So yeah. Okay. Thank you. And again, that's where you want to bring in the fruit because the fruit is actually one of the most healing foods for our nervous system. So anytime you have neurological or restless leg syndromes, any kind of spasms going in in the body, fruit is one of the, the main foods that heals the nervous system because it works deeply on our endocrine system. So incorporate fruit as you're in your transformation as well. Um, well that's, that's easy. I, I, <laughs> Mary knows I eat lots of fruit and always have. <laughs> All right. That's great. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi, Mary Beth. I have a question kind of related to the bloating. Mm -hmm. um, so my stomach is so large that I, I can't even wear my normal pants. Um, so like leggings galore. Um, and I, I am already, I'm on like day 20 or whatever, and it's still not going away. How are your bowel movements? Regular and multiple times a day. Okay. That's good. So this, this is kind of interesting and it, it might be too much information, but the average American has like over 30 pounds of impacted fecal matter along the, the walls of the colon. And basically what ends up happening is it just the more acidic we eat, the more impacted it just keeps getting and it gets pressed up against the walls. And so as we start to detox, and alkalize the body and get the glyphosate out and do all that, that starts to break off and starts to fall off. And it can actually lead to like that growing of your stomach. And you're like, where's all that coming from? And it's really because it's just been in the body for who knows how long, and it's just been hidden. And so it's, it's a process of really, really making sure that you're supporting your eliminative pathways. So you want to, have you seen the article in our regenerative health app around kidney filtration? Yeah. And I, I did test for that and it's, I, I, I think it was you that posted an actual picture of your <laughs> urine, um, in the app and mine looks nothing like that. It's way more clear. There's a tiny cloud in there, but hardly, um, and, and much lighter, but that could be due with having too much liquid close to bed or something like that. Yeah. So <laughs> You know, it's great that you're having your bowel movements. That's awesome. But the other way to really filter that stuff out is through the kidneys as well. So trying to get that kidney filtration going and, and it's a different process for everyone. Heather was just saying it's taken her 14 weeks to see her kidneys filter. Some people it's longer, some people it's shorter. So the, the foods that really assist with kidney filtration are our citrus and our like tart cherry and watermelon. Those are some of the best foods for the kidneys. And then the more raw you stay, the easier it's going to be on your kidneys to start filtering. Um, and again, if you're experiencing the bloat, doing warm ginger teas all day if eating raw is, is hard in that in that capacity but it's just a process of getting all that junk out of our bodies that's been hidden so there is i know when i first went down this journey i actually 
gained weight when I first started. And I was, a lot of it was water weight and some of it was around my stomach and it was really, my body had just been holding on to so much. And it was for one, it was so dehydrated and I didn't even know that I was holding on to water weight. And so I had this process of really working to get my kidneys to filter. And as soon as my kidneys started to filter, like all of that just started dropping away. The water weight went away, the bloating went away, you know, and it's just a process of breaking that down and then your body transferring that into acidic ash that can be removed through the kidneys. So, um, are you, have you tried the aloe digest? No. Cause that's another really great. Um, I was telling Heather about that. That's a really another great aid that can help with it. The aloe basically helps to hold, grab that stuff that's stuck in there and like really pull it through. Um, so there's a chance that, you know, it's just not coming through the colon all the way. So in, in increasing aloe in the diet is a great thing to do. And it, that'll also help with the kidneys. Um, but just keep focusing on that kidney filtration and keep checking it. And if it gets to the point where you're just not seeing it, we do have additional kidney support herbs and different things that you can add in to even give you more of a bang, um, to get that moving. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, I guess what I'm hearing is just focus on that kidney filter filtration. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I would definitely incorporate some aloe that might also start to help move it out a little bit quicker. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, may I ask, um, on the, on the note of the aloe and the, uh, the kidney filtration, um, I, I, it might've been you that Heather sent me a video, um, on, and, um, I live, of course I live in Arizona, so I have, uh, real aloe growing crazy in my backyard. Can I just scrape that out and use that? Yeah, so there are different types of aloe. So you gotta kind of double check um, and make sure that the type of aloe that you have is good for internal consumption. But most green aloes are, um, but you can look it up on the internet really quite simply. But yeah, you, you just take the inside and you, I typically put it in a smoothie um, I, I, sometimes I make smoothies in the morning with my power shake and I'll even, you know, do like an aloe f filet <laughs> and throw it in that smoothie and just consume it that way. Okay. And, and the, the urine, uh, flushing the kidney, and is there a video to watch somewhere? Yeah, there is. So, um, all of you, I'm assuming you all have, have gotten into the regenerative health app. Have you seen that Kathy? Um, uh, yeah, I, I did um, look through it um, the other night quickly. Yeah. So I can go ahead and um, I'll write your names down. There's a there's an article in there that I wrote about it. Um, so I can just go ahead and write your name down and I'll tag you in the article about it. Um, any it, all the information you can find in the regenerative health app is if you go to the topic section, we then have all these modules and I'm pretty sure that the kidney article is located in the detox tips. So I think that's what it's called or detox help um, module, but I okay. can and just tag you in it and you can read up on it. Thank you so much. Yeah. And you too, Kim, I'll, I'll tag you in it as well. Great thing. So when you say app, does that mean something I have to download or just by joining the regenerative health, that's good enough? Yeah, just by joining it. Um, okay. Yeah, it's because it's through a program called Marty Networks app that I always say the app, but yeah, if you, uh, okay. if you're part of that program, you're, you're in it. Mary Beth, can we put Mighty Networks on our laptops or is it only a phone app? Um, I don't even use Mighty Networks on my computer. I just copy the link to the Regenerative Health and I just, it's like a web page on my computer. So you can just access it through your computer via the web browser. I'll send you the direct link, Steph. Mary Beth, I have a question. Yeah. Um, I, I'm trying to support my 14 year old son. He is our only child who has any health issues. He has allergies, um, specifically asthma. Mm -hmm. And I know that his gut has got to be involved in this. He also has like, has always had bumps behind his upper arm. And oh, if I take him to the allopathic doctor, they just put him on inhalers and all sorts of things. And I just want to break free of that system. What would be the protocol you would suggest for him? 
Yeah. So anytime there's allergies, it's a sign that our lymphatic system is backed up. Um, and I can tell you, I used to have really bad allergies. Like I had some food allergies, but then I had like just springtime allergies really bad. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I started clearing up my lymphatic system, I have zero issues at all. And so the main thing that clears up the lymphatic system is your astringent foods. So again, going with your fruits, like your citrus, like we were talking about today on our call. Um, so getting him high on fruit is going to start breaking up that lymphatic system. Um, even the bio fruit powder, you know, like if he can sip on that all day and then also getting the kidneys to open. So anytime you have little bumps on the skin or, you know, things happening on the skin, it's a sign that our kidneys aren't filtering because now everything's trying to come out of our skin. Um, acne can be that too. And again, acne is related to the lymph system. So um, I can send you a more detailed video that Dr. Robert Morse does on how to detox the lymphatic system via yeah. herbs, but I would say primarily the biomedic is going to be super beneficial because it's also an inflammation issue. Um, so is he taking biomedic right now? He's only gets a little bit when he takes kids epigenius, but I, I can fully put him on it. I mean, he can swallow things. Yeah. I would start him on at least one capsule a day, if not move up to two to three, and that will really start to help move move things out and get the gut right, you know, move the inflammation out. So I would just say as much astringent fruits as you can get in them, there are, you know, lymph and kidney herbs, like I talked about that could be incorporated, but start with the biomedic, start with the astringent fruits and, um, start with like high doses of the bio fruit as well. Okay, cool. I will do that. It's funny how, how intuitive the body is. Like if I bring home a bag of cuties or something, I mean, he would eat the whole bag. His body knows what he wants. And like, even as a little boy, he'd be like, I don't like eggs and peanut butter. I'm like, who doesn't like eggs and peanut butter? Eat the eggs and the peanut butter. That's what came back as highly intolerant, you know, for him. So So listen to the things that congest the lymphatic the most are um, mucus forming foods. So peanut butter is actually a mucus forming food. Um, Eggs really do congest the lymphatic system heavily cooked foods, processed foods. So again, Mm -hmm. like just stay with the hydrating astringent foods and that's going to be the most, the best for the lymphatic system. Yeah. And maybe this is the exact same issue, but he has a very, very itchy scalp, like crazy, Mm -hmm. same kind of thing happening there. Again, the skin is trying to come out his skin, whatever it is. So, I mean, I've had people go through detox where they they're going through detox and they've had like the worst dandruff they've ever had in their life because it's just like coming out of their scalp. So, um, yeah, it's, it's all signs that are showing that his his lymphatic system is congested. And so, uh, the sooner you start working on it, I know when I was, when I was young, I had a really congested lymphatic system and weak kidneys genetically. And it led me to have really bad acne. I had allergies. And then I also ended up getting my tonsils removed because I didn't know what I know now. Um, but it turns out your tonsils are one of, you know, the main places where we eliminate waste and lymphatic waste. And so when people are overly toxic there, it, it usually turns into chronic tonsillitis or something. But had I known to just clean the lymphatic system out, get the kidneys filtering, you can really move that all through your body. Cool. Thank you. Yep. Hey, Mary Beth, since we're talking about this already, I want to just ask if there's anything in addition you would recommend, you know, Caden, my son is 16, his diet is horrible, and um, I mean, he does take biomedic every day, I get him to drink a power shake or an epigenius every single day, Um, he's now finally taking apothecaries fairly consistently, um, but I cannot get him to change his diet, you know, i it's, it's hard with a 16 year old who's off kind of doing his own thing. So I'm thinking maybe the bio fruit would be helpful for him. Do you have any other recommendations? Yeah. So, I mean, ultimately, like if people really want to see changes in their skin and the lymphatic system, a dietary change is going to have to happen at some point just to really be able to get rid of it. But if that's not happening, I would say just continue to flood the body with more good. And so everything you have them on is good, but I would also say add in the bio fruit, um, the pineapple cocoa hydrate and the aloe digest. And I would just try to have him on high doses of that, drinking it all day long, like healthy Gatorade, you know, um, Rebecca aloe digest could be another one for your son as well. That could be beneficial. Um, if you're still on here. Yeah. 
So I love the bio fruit because it does have a lot of astringent fruits in it. Um, the most astringent is citrus, right? So if you can get him to add in citrus into his diet as well, that would be really beneficial. But no. Cool. Looks like we got time for one more question, if anyone else. There's one in the chat, Mary Beth. Oh. What is biofruit? So there's, for everyone who's doing the ultimate lifestyle transformation, I know we, that we suggest, you know, either continuing with another ultimate lifestyle transformation or moving to the core four, but another one of my favorite packs that we have is called the juice bar in a bag. And it comes with six different um, superfood blends. And one of them is the aloe digest, the pineapple cocoa hydrate, the carrot juice plus the green spectrum, the bio fruit and the can't beat this. And all of those are just so amazing for really deeply nourishing the body, but also mainly hydrating and working on the lymphatic system. Um, so the bio fruit is one of those that has 18 different organic super fruits that have been dehydrated. And so it's amazing. It's a way to get in a really diverse array of fruits because most of us aren't, can't even find those types of fruits in the grocery store. So I just sip on it all day long. I give it to my son as healthy Gatorade. And it's just a way to, to get in more fruit. If, um, Kathy, I think it was you that were talking about the bloating, like the bio fruit is, is a pre-digested way to get the fruit in that would probably, um, help with, with the bloating as well. So that's one of my favorites to have on hand at all times. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you all so much for bringing your valuable questions and we will be here next week. I believe Carrie Drinkwine is leading, I believe, um, but one of us will be here and I just um, appreciate you all and congratulate you all on your health journey and it's fun to be in this community with you. Thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you, Mary.